Dang, bears, why you gotta be so bearish? Yeah, them bears are making the markets live in straight fear. Altcoins getting wrecked, Ethereum below 2K and farther down, and more and more people are dropping out, deciding it's over and selling into the downturn. Me selling into a downturn? Heck no, we are going to continue to do what we've done with our crypto since we got involved. Hoddle strong, because it's time for Chico Crypto. Well, today we have a smorgasbord of crypto information. Let's first talk about Bitcoin, then Ethereum, and finish the episode off with a dash of altcoin. I don't even want to talk about the price of BTC because who knows what could have happened. I shoot my videos one day in advance, above 30k or below 30k or right on 30k. It doesn't matter to me, we are in an extended bear trap market that I unfortunately thought was going to end a lot earlier. But now I finally realize this thing is going to extend out for a lot longer than I expected. So how long? Well, this market feels eerily similar to the cycle when I first got involved, 2013-2014. I heard about Bitcoin from Reddit in 2012 for the first time, and it came on my full radar at the start of 2013, right before the first hype cycle in 2013. As we can see from the historical price chart, it surged from around $12 in October of 2012 to 230 by April of 2013. I didn't buy, but I was watching those charts like mad. How could an asset do that? But then I watched it crash from the April high of 230 down to about 66 bucks at its low. This happened around July 8th. Yikes is all I could think. I'm not gonna touch that. It's going down to 12 bucks. Shoot, maybe even going to zero I was thinking. But as we can see, it didn't. It recovered slightly, but pretty much a sideways, slightly bullish market until October of that year, getting back to above 100. But did I buy in October? No, but my finger was itching and I was on the charts all day long. And then by the end of that month, October, the hype cycle began. Bitcoin surged and by November 5th, it had broken the April high of 230 bucks. That was my signal to buy. I bought my first BTC off of local Bitcoins around that number, 230 to 250. And then it kept going, doubled in the span of days, so I made my first large buy of which I had to borrow the money from my grandpa, which I have proof of from Coinbase. Just over 416 bucks per coin, and I got over 5.85 BTC for around 2,442 bucks. And it kept going too, pushing up towards 1200 by the end of November. Literally in a month, we had a hype cycle blow off top because it crashed. So now let's just do some comparisons to that cycle 2013 to what we have experienced throughout this year, 2021. BTC went from $12 October 2012 to $230, peaking April 9th, 2013, a multiplier of 19X. What happened this cycle? The price went from around 10K in October 2020 to about 64K, peaking April 13th, 2021, a multiplier of 6.4X. How about the crashes? Well, back then it went from the peak April 9th of 230 to a low of 66 bucks, July 8th, 2013, a 71% decrease or crash. This cycle? Well, the peak was April 13th and it was 64K. And as of yesterday, July 20th, we were hitting the lows of around 29.5K, a decrease of basically 54%. Why so similar, especially the dates? Peaks around the same time in April, within days. And if we are nearing the lows, the lows are in July. Of course, the multipliers and the crashes aren't going to be the same. BTC has grown as an asset, and these are going to constrain over time. So if we are mirroring 2013, that means things won't get hype cycle bullish until the end of the year. We may start to increase slowly but surely month after month, but it won't be intense like we saw throughout the beginning of this year. It will be a gradual climb back up to 64K, and then hype cycle. Will it happen? All Chico has to say is the more things change, the more they stay the same.
Now let's switch those gears right to Ethereum. Everyone knows last week the Ethereum Foundation announced the day of the big upgrade, the London mainnet. It's confirmed and has a scheduled drop. From the blog, after a successful testnet deployment, the London upgrade is now ready to be activated on the Ethereum mainnet. It will go live on block 12,965,000, which is expected between August 3rd through the 5th, 2021. So at max, we are just over two weeks away from Ethereum's biggest upgrade in years. And if you know anything about this upgrade, the big change is EIP-1559, the fee market change for the ETH 1.0 chain. The Ethereum miners are getting shoved to the side and a portion of their revenues, aka fees, are going to be burned. Burn is a burn, the Dalek's inferno. Burn is a burn, it's going away forever now. This burn, it's a burn, this upgrade has been on Chico's radar since the beginning. February of 2020 was the first time I made a video on it, and I've kept making videos since, keeping you updated with where it's going. Although now it's time to bring up something else. Every single one of my previous videos was good. It shined EIP 1559 and this fee market change in a good light. But, but, but this could cause some problems for Ethereum in the short to mid term, especially with how the miners will react as their profits start to decrease. We fixed the glitch. So he won't be receiving a paycheck anymore. So it'll just work itself out naturally. No one likes when their source of income is decreased, a pay cut. Usually people quit their jobs or look for something else when a pay cut comes. The miners, in my opinion, are going to revolt. So what could the Ether miners do post London upgrade? Well, the miners could start colluding together on the ETH1 chain for reorganizations of the chain, actually destroying the immutability and blockchain consensus of Ethereum. Users on Twitter started creating and talking about this in early July. It started with an at Edgar Arut who posted a concept code for it on Twitter and GitHub called MEV Uncle Bandit Geef. And then days later, a bunny girl got the topic heated by creating NFTs for actual reorgs, where the higher the bribe to the miners attached to the reorg, the more rare your NFT becomes. This prompted Vitalik Buterin to respond with a tweet. He said, during the last weeks, there has been a lot of discussion around the possibility of miners running custom software that accepts bribes to reorg the chain at Gakons, Georges Constantopoulos of Paradigm, and I explain how this will become harder after the proof of stake merge. So remember how I've been saying MEV, minor extractable value now, soon maximum extractable value, is going to be the most important topic for Ethereum, and it is. Miners, as their income goes down post EIP 1559, are going to be taking bribes. They are going to possibly try to reorg as a show of force against this EIP and the eventual merge to proof of stake, where the miners are gone. Don't you forget about Stop EIP 1559, a website created back in February where basically an even majority of the Ether mining pools wanted it stopped and they were planning a hash power show of force. This hash power force plan didn't end up panning out for the opposing pools, but from that it's clear to me a large subset of Ether miners are not happy about this upgrade coming soon. And one of the pools, Flexpool, spoke on Discord back then of if this passes and if mining becomes unprofitable. They said they're planning on burning Ethereum to the ground. A chain reorg would be burning Ether to the ground. And since the miner's income is about to be slashed and they are eventually getting the boot, reorgs are a high possibility soon. That's why if we go back to Vitalik's tweet and click into the research article posted in collaboration with Georges of Paradigm, we can see the urgency in getting to the ETH2 merge. At the bottom in takeaways, Vitalik and Georges say, the most effective prevention measure against reorgs in the context of Ethereum is to further speed up the work on the merge, in particular, to quickly achieve the credible capability of making an emergency merge, which would transition the chain to POS. 
Rushing the merge would have high risk and might break infrastructure, but a credible commitment to do it anyway if many miners start reorg attacking the chain would align incentives against such behavior. Speed up that merge, get to ETH too quicker. And this even has prompted Flashbots to speak on it. They posted their own blog posts, Flashbots on reorgs, and say in the post, we will provide a high level overview of why Flashbots does not support reorg games, why we believe reorg games are a net negative for all actors in this space, including miners, and how the unique nature of the Flashbots organization is set up to respond to this and future political and technical challenges. Remember, Flashbots is the organization which spotlighted MEV. Without them, this wouldn't be in the public eye. Flashbots is probably the most important organization in crypto as of right now. And guess what? It's tokenless. Although there is a token which gets to use their technology and research ideas first. Dibs are always given to Alchemist Coin, which is obvious when you see the Alchemist Twitter posting with their mascot Flash. And many of the Flashbots team members are known Alchemists. And a little bonus for those missed holders, yesterday, what I've been saying since March of this year happened. Alchemist Coin and Ampleforth are going to have reward programs interconnected. Alchemist tweeted yesterday, Alchemist is pleased to announce that with the coming launch of Ampleforth Geyser V2, Universal Vaults, Crucible compatibility with Geyser Reward Program is on the way. This update enables Mist holders to reuse their Crucible for subscription to Geyser V2 Reward Programs. Uh, can you say showing? And boy, Alchemist is seriously undervalued. Just look where Ampleforth is. Cheers, I'll see you next time.